So we've ventured a little further west now and I've found myself a brand new Ranger to play with. A Jet Ranger, that is, the ultimate rock star taxi. Now, the best kept secret around this part of the world would have to be the Oxley Wild Rivers National Park. And yes, it is sensational for bushwalking, but if you want to get an overview, a really quick way of discovering the majesty and the magnitude of the place, you're going to have to get airborne. Tell me what's so fantastic about it, James. Well, I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I'm completely and utterly biased. Uh, I'd have to say, uh, from a pilot's perspective, it's one of the the best places in Australia, I think, to, to fly. We've got uh, in the vicinity of 500 kilometres of uh, Wild River Gorge country out here. Virtually no one knows exists. James Ranger works for a company called Fleet Helicopters, and when he's not fighting fires from the air, he gets to whiz tourists like me around the gorge country on an amazing one-hour scenic flight. Heading out from Armadale, our aerial adventure takes in at least six of the gorges that make up the Apsley Maclay River system, which lies at the heart of the Oxley Wild Rivers National Park. Basically every ridge you can see out there as far as the horizon is all part of this uh, gorge country network. I love that you get to fly sort of right inside these gorges. You feel completely embraced by the landscape. It's just fantastic. A little bit of trivia, uh, in 1866 this crazy Italian bloke crossed it on a tightrope. <laughs> uh, I love those Italians. Yeah, I don't know if he was uh, gutsy or nuts, but, or a combination of both. But across it, it wasn't good enough for him just to walk across it, he pushed a wheelbarrow across it and did somersaults. And uh, he did about two or three crossings. Very near the top of the Great Dividing Range, so the catchment area is, is relatively small, so the water flow can be quite low at times and then really after heavy rain it, it, it picks up the uh, day before yesterday and dries a bone. Yeah, I, I had to bring in some pretty big contacts to pull this off for you, I tell you what. <laughs> Two thirds of this extraordinary national park is declared wilderness, ensuring its natural glory remains pristine forever. Mother well, Nature certainly is a spectacular sculptor. Ah, she is at that. Surprisingly, in the midst of all that rugged country, there are a few homesteads up for grabs. You can camp here, near rustic old Udale's hut, but imagine how great it would be to stay in the heart of all this wilderness at heritage-listed East Kundurang Station, which can only be booked through New South Wales National Parks. Also visible from the air are the random pockets of dry rainforest, which have earned this park its world heritage status. Eucalypts predominate, but nestled down the riverbanks and tucked into every second gully, you'll find more emerald treasure. That's incredible. When you're on the ground and you're in those little pockets of rainforest, you don't get that much of a sense of how they fit into the broader landscape. It really is just patchwork, isn't it? Tiny little fragments of it. Yeah, the demarcation line's really, really quite distinct. Uh, you'll go from one to the other quite suddenly. And just as suddenly, we head into another dramatically beautiful gorge, Wollamombi. That is completely out of this world. They look like massive, huge castles belonging to another era. They almost looks like ramparts and battlements. Certainly do. It's uh, one of the deepest sections we've got in the, in the gorge network, and uh, it's home uh, to the highest falls in New South Wales. Which, as fate would have it, was barely visible as a trickle. Fortunately, though, Chandler Falls, right next door, was more forthcoming. Oh, wow. Oh, check it out. Oh, my goodness. In a word, this is spectacular country, unimaginably wild and remote, sensational from the air, yet equally impressive on foot, especially if you orienteer your way to the rocks above magnificent Green Gully. Now, of course, what you don't realise from the air is all these fabulous rock outcrops are the perfect habitat for the most iconic species this park has, which is the... Brush-tailed rock wallaby sorrel. They're so cute, aren't they? They certainly are, especially this time of year when you see their babies. <laughs> yeah. On a national and state level, these wallabies are endangered, but Ranger Piers Thomas assures me this park has a healthy population. In the early part of the 20th century, they were hunted for their fur, and at one stage, government records show that there were 30,000 of these animals killed in one month in Tenderfield. It's one country town in one state in the country. 
They estimate now there's only 30,000 of them left. Mm. And about three quarters of those live in the gorges that have just flown over. We're pretty lucky to be looking after yeah, yeah. pretty much the largest remaining population of brush-eyed rock wallabies in the world. How do they differ from your other standard wallabies and kangaroos? They seem to have adapted to a life of, of living on the rocks. They have the big long tail to help them balance, um, whereas the other, the other kangaroos and wallabies don't have a tail which is quite as long and brushy. They spend a, a little bit of time browsing on, on trees like the fig that you can see there. Right. Um, they will eat those sorts of vegetation, whereas a lot of most other kangaroos spend most of the time eating grass. The rock wallaby is also well adapted to life in the thick of the rainforest, using the vegetation as both a food source and screen protecting them from predators. Wallabies and kangaroos are actually incredibly adaptable. They can have three young on the go at once. Um, they can have a young at foot, which is one which has basically left the pouch but is still with its mother. They can have another one which is still within the pouch, um, which is suckling on a teat. And they can actually have another embryo within their womb, which has started to develop but it actually pauses halfway through its development. So then they may not have to go through all of the, the rigmarole, for want of a better word, of, of mating. They can just, you know, they've got one just in the pouch ready to go. There you go. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to say that on a wildlife show. 